what's the, our what's the story reef. with coral reefs? How important are they for us and where are they heading? They're in bad shape. Too much pollution, uh, too much carbon, which results in acidification of the ocean. Um, too much fishing. The oceans are our lungs. Without, our, without the oceans, humans cannot exist on this planet. The ocean is warming up much faster than uh, the terrestrial surface of the planet and that results in corals dying out. Uh, overfishing is another factor. The coral cannot survive without the fish. The fish cannot survive without the coral. It, it's a symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. Corals are nurseries. Really our, our best hope and best chance is to try to help nature restore itself. It's amazing what happens if you take people out of the equation. I think we can still turn the ship around. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult and it requires some serious uh, concerted effort worldwide. And lifestyle adjustments. Major lifestyle adjustments mm -hmm. for, for all of us. We're either going to do it uh, consciously and willingly or it's going to be forced upon us in a catastrophic manner. Stop using plastic. We, we need to get off the fossil fuels, mm. uh, be more environmentally conscious about what we're doing. Uh, diets, our, our food. I think I kind of remember that the, it takes about a thousand liters of water to raise one kilogram of, of beef. Modify our lifestyles, yes. okay? It takes like 2,000 liters of water to produce a cotton t shirt. Yeah. What you just said. Hope is not a strategy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it actually. And you're on. You're on. Ah, live. Clubs. Mm. Okay, All right, so we're on the air. Yeah. Uh, okay, you cannot imagine. As, as luck has it. Exactly. We were just talking about, uh, the other day, we were just talking about uh, creating an episode about uh, uh, ocean pollution, trash, environmentalism in general. And uh, we're just here enjoying the beautiful view of Petit Saint Vincent and we're running into this... Um, completely random bystander and we start talking and uh, we're introducing it to each other and it turns out he's a lo he's a uh, uh, restorer of coral reefs which Eugene. doesn't meet Eugene. Eugene meet yeah. Eugene oh my god hey guys <laughs> Eugene is uh, originally from Romania correct but he yes. lives in the US correct that's right and he flies all over the world to restore coral nice. reefs so Eugene, what is the state what's, of the, our what's the story reef? with coral reefs? How important are they for us and where are they heading? Wow, in a nutshell, um, they're in bad shape. I think everybody by now has figured that out. You know, if you follow what's going on with the oceans, in general, we're heading in the wrong direction. Um, it's very simple. Uh, too much pollution, uh, too much carbon which results in acidification of the ocean, um, too much fishing, and all of these things combined are really bringing our oceans to the brink. Um, and by the way, in case people don't know this, the oceans are our lungs. Without, our, without the oceans, humans cannot exist on this planet. Mm -hmm. Without a healthy ocean, mm -hmm. I need to emphasize that. But going back to the corals, um, they've been dwindling. You know, everybody knows about bleaching episodes. Everybody knows about corals dying. Everybody, everybody knows that the ocean is warming up much faster than uh, the terrestrial surface of the planet. And that results in corals uh, uh, dying out. Uh, overfishing is another factor. Too much fish out of the sea. The coral cannot survive without the fish. The fish cannot survive without the coral. Okay. Corals, it, it's a symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. Corals are nurseries mm -hmm. for the fish. That's where the little fish are hiding and growing. Um, and really our, our best hope and best chance is to try to 
help nature restore itself. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what happens if you take people out of the equation. You know, if you leave, just leave the place alone. We don't have to do any. That's just it. If we did nothing, nature be will fine. take care. Of, nature will be so fine. We're, so we're not beyond recoverable point. No, I don't think we are beyond okay. recoverable okay. point. I think we can still turn the ship around. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult and it requires some serious uh, concerted effort worldwide. And lifestyle adjustments. Major lifestyle adjustments mm -hmm. you know, for, for all of us. We're either going to do it uh, consciously and willingly or it's going to be forced upon us in a catastrophic manner. And if we don't do anything about it, you know, it's going to hit us in ways that are going to be, you know, way worse than if we try to do something. And perhaps, you know, we'll be dead by then, but you have perhaps. to think about our, perhaps, yeah. but you have to think about our children, you know. The other thing is that all these effects um, grow exponentially and they're compounded, okay. And if you think, oh, we had a bad hurricane season, you know, well, fine, it happened. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Most of us survive. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't connect the dots. Exactly. For now, most of us survive. It's only going to get worse mm -hmm. if we don't start actively doing something about it. And the, the little thing we're trying to do in terms of coral restoration, right? Again, it's assisting nature to recover itself. We can't replace nature. Yeah. We don't have that ability, you know. Um, but what we're doing is, in very, very small, specific ways, uh, speaking about this island, Petit St. Vincent, um, here in the Caribbean, uh, we are basically planting corals in nurseries, just like you do with plants. Mm -hmm. What makes your homegrown coral more uh, resistant to dying out than the, than the natural one that's already I, there I'm and been in place? Really glad you asked that. That's an, actually an excellent question, you know. Well, here's what happened. In the 80s and 90s, there was a disease around here in the Caribbean called white band disease. Okay. Uh, scientists think it was virus, a virus that basically wiped out more than 80% of the elk horn coral cover Oof. throughout this area. Okay. okay? And uh, what we are doing is we're going around and finding colonies that are still alive and thriving. We take small cuttings from them. Mm -hmm and populated the nursery to let it grow there. So what we're thinking and hoping is that these survivors were the most resilient individuals okay. in the colony. Okay. Okay? And their genotypes are the most resilient ones. Now, it doesn't mean they're invincible. You know, we're trying to, right. we did water quality testing around this island. We chose, you know, the best possible locations, the best possible depth, keeping in mind all the factors, the environmental factors to allow the nursery to actually grow and thrive. And so far it's been doing well. Uh, we don't know if it's going to succeed or not, mm -hmm. but uh, it's either try or- Or give up altogether. Or give up altogether and yeah. say, hey, bye guys, you know. <laughs> yeah. So this is what, what we're trying to do is make, make this good for business, make restoring nature, helping nature good for business. We're, we're helping ourselves, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. You know, really it's like, it, it, but you, but you ourselves. know where the problem is. The problem with the, with the, with the current state of things is that is that uh, uh, it is good for business in the very very long run, and none of the businesses are running in such a short. Well, look, run, I mean, let's, let's, let's take the example of this island. Mm -hmm. okay? St. Vincent is a private island, it's mm -hmm. privately owned. It has a luxury resort on it, twenty two cottages, you know, a couple of restaurants, spa, beautiful place. Mm -hmm. You've seen it, very nice, right? Um, what is their business? Hospitality, Tourism, right? Yes. Tourism, yeah. right? Absolutely. Well, why do people pay a lot of money to come here? So they can see the reef, so they can yeah. have so a clear, they clean can water. See something beautiful, beautiful. Yes. something thriving, Amazing. something beauty. alive. Nobody wants to see dead reef, mm -hmm. yeah. no fish, and mm -hmm. nothing in the water. Mm -hmm. You know, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. So, yes, it is good for business and it doesn't really take that long. It's not long term, it's now, it's immediate. Yeah. Okay? okay? That's what I mean when I say it's good for business. Because, all right, let's take the example of sharks or whales. If you kill a shark or a whale, your economic benefit is one time. That's mm -hmm. it, right? And then it's dead and it will never come back. Okay? If instead of that, you choose to go sea sharks diving or whale watching mm -hmm. from a boat, you know? Mm -hmm. That over whale and, and that over. shark is a sustainable business. It will always be there. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what I mean, you know? It's, it's good for business. 
that simple. I, I like you saying that because I mean, it, it, it's almost uh, it's almost impossible to convince anybody uh, in power these days to do anything that does not bring money, or at least it brings or, or bring, brings cost at the very least. You know, yeah, so, creating so, jobs, all of that. You know, economic so, development. So I'm glad there is a there is a, a chain of uh, of commer commercial viability in this. Well, actually. look, I mean, you're an economist, right? So the, there are economic models that that actually uh, measure the value of a dead shark or whale mm -hmm. and compare it to the value of the same animal alive. Wow! And you can look at. That. I mean, this is available. It's been done mm -hmm, by, mm -hmm, by researchers mm -hmm. and scientists. Mm -hmm. And you can see immediately the figures, and you see, well, wow! I mean, you know, we're we're doing a very stupid thing mm -hmm. by killing them. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. economically speaking, strictly from that point of view, you know, you don't even have That's to look at any other factors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, forget the environment, yeah. forget uh, your your morality, forget yeah. anything else. You know, economics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It works like that. It's better. Pristine Seas. It's a program of the National Geographic Society. It's ran by a Spanish uh, marine biologist, Dr. Enrique Sala. And he goes around the world uh, with a very, very tight organization, convincing governments to establish large marine protected areas and enforce them. Okay? And he's built a lot of economic bottles because he figured out very early in the game that if you go to people and say, hey, let's save the ocean and, and you know, because you're, you have a good heart, it's not going to happen. Right, it's right. It's never going to happen. Yeah. It doesn't get okay? the traction. No, you need the economic incentives. And he's presenting the case, showing them how much better their economies would fare if they applied protection, conservation, uh, uh, management, and enforcement measures on their natural resources in the ocean. Have you have you had any success uh, in gaining traction with big corporations as opposed to just local governments that are obviously directly interested in their islands being a, a viable tourist attraction? The real cost of doing business is not ever captured on corporate uh, uh, profit and loss Correct. statements. You, you don't see it because they don't factor in the natural resources they're using. Okay, mm -hmm. there's no cost to air, there's no cost to water, there's no cost to you know a, a lot of other things. In your opinion, so what can uh, you know the human being can do? You know, daily on the daily basic uh, routine, can we support it? You know. You know, we can start with very simple things, you know, I mean, everybody knows this because it's repeated. It's a mantra, a mantra, a mantra, you know, stop using plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. First, Here's, first, first thing, yeah. do this, every, do this. Yeah. Every time yeah. you drink, you take Every another. time you drink, yeah. water. We, we need to get off the fossil fuels, mm -hmm. okay? The problem is we're not moving fast enough in that direction. Mm -hmm. For the moment. Exactly, mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, you know, get rid of plastics, uh, you know, Try to pollute less. Try to, uh, you know, uh, be more environmentally conscious about what we're doing. Uh, diets, our, our food. Yeah, that is too. M you know, meat production, raising cattle to produce meat for human consumption, contributes anywhere from 11 to 16 percent of uh, uh, carbon emissions. Carbon, carbon, carbon emissions. Carbon emissions. Okay. I think I kind of remember that the, it takes about a thousand liters of water to raise one kilogram of, of beef. Even those of us who are aware of the gravity of the problem and how urgent it is, it's almost, I wouldn't say impossible, it's so hard to modify our lifestyles, yes. okay? It takes like 2,000 liters of water to produce a cotton t-shirt, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? What are we wearing? And yet we go uh, through them like like there's exactly. no time, what, you know. We, you I, know? I remember years and years ago I used to wear the same t-shirt for many, many, many years and it was indestructible. Yeah. You know, these days we have something that goes to goes through. You know, it gets holes after after five it's washes. It's like a, a permanent behavior. Like yeah. a, we are addicted. No, so it's it's, really it's, it's ironic. To, you know, yeah. I drive a car. Yeah. Yes, it's a hybrid. Yeah. Yes, it consumes less yeah. mm -hmm. gasoline, but it's a car. Yeah. I get on planes to fly places. You know, uh, all the things that we do contribute, and by many things that need to ship shipments and you know. Have... And, and and all our systems, the the human systems of organization and life and economic. Uh, uh, development, the wheels that keep our world, human species, turn around are designed in a way that is simply not sustainable on the scale that we need. Oh, the other thing we can do, you know, I'm going to say this as a father, I have one child, stop procreating. 
there are too many of us. <laughs> There's too many of us, yeah. There are too many of us, okay? Honey, listen to and, them. And the, yep. and the planet, I mean, use condoms. Seriously, that's some serious. <laughs> and honey, no more kids for us. No more kids for yeah. us, we got two. Yeah, we got two. So we already met the quota. No, you know, it's, and, 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 and I, you know, I'm saying that half jokingly, tongue in cheek, of course, but because we all love our children, right? And, yeah. But, but. There's too many of us. The but you know what? That is, but you know what? That is kind of a funny one. I I, I, I will uh, respectfully somewhat disagree to that, and only because if we change the lifestyle, I agree that we're that there's too many of us for the lifestyle we have. That's the point. That's if the point. we change the lifestyle, if we started uh, if we started living with, in harmony and in in uh, with with nature in mind and completely change our life, we, I think the Earth could support easily twice as much. No, you're right. Twice as many of Probably. us. You're, you, you're right. You're right. It's it's the combination of the two. It's right. the numbers and the path that we've been engaged on, okay? And and I don't see enough evidence to make me personally confident, and it's just my opinion, okay, uh, that we can actually make those changes fast enough, fast enough. Uh, willingly, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to be forced to make them, okay? Okay. Uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, by some catastrophic changes, catastrophic yeah. events. Okay. You yeah. know, a, a few generations from now, the survivors will go to a more sustainable way of living closer to nature, just like we used to be. Okay. Uh, we're not going to use these tools. We're going to use, you know, uh, bows and arrows and, uh, you know, <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. You know, seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I don't, I don't know that for a fact. I can read the future, but the way we're engaged right now is simply not sustainable for the long run. You know, be, uh, I was earlier in the conversation. I was a, I was the devil's advocate, but but truly, you like I'm, that role, <laughs> I, I <laughs> yeah. do. But I'm actually an optimist too, because I I see a level of consciousness among people uh, uh, growing rapidly, growing. Yeah. Uh, and I think I I, I I hope really. I'm not sure if I if I think that way, but I do hope that this is going to come to actually real uh, lifestyle changes in a lot I, of I agree with in you. a lot of people. I, I agree with you there, except hope is not a strategy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we need action. You well, st well, strategy on, on our part is is to leave the life as as close to nature and as much in harmony as nature as as possible. And uh, uh, and I think and I think those are two ways we can go. We can go top down, meaning try to uh, try to force the governments to change their policies, and going from the bottom up, meaning uh, basically changing our own personal life in such a way as to set an example for others and well, just wait I, for I, it. To, I think for that it to, to you're, feed. You're right. You're absolutely right. I think that we need both, in fact, all of the above. We need mm -hmm. every single solution yeah. that is imaginable to us. We need to bring that to the table and, and act on it. Okay, that's, that's the crucial thing here. Because if we don't take this very seriously, it's not a joke, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sorry, with all due respect, Elon Musk, if you want to, you can go to Mars. I'm not <laughs> betting on that. I'm betting on this planet. Yeah. We need to save this one, okay? We need to keep it as livable as possible for us for many 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 generations to come at this point is if we all try to do as little as we can seriously stop using plastic do what you can okay buy less you know I, buy less, <laughs> buy less. Exactly. Exactly. fix more you know because the simpler doesn't mean i grew worse. up in communist yeah. romania okay we didn't throw things away mm -hmm. yeah. we fixed them We'd, because we couldn't afford to it was and economics it was impossible to yeah. Know? yeah buy but a new one exactly I, I grew up in po in yeah, communist Poland, so I can exactly yeah, relate to that. Exactly. You know, I had one pair of sneakers for four or five years. You know, until I outgrew until them. Or, they, until or, my or toes I, went out of them. Or, exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was glad that they had holes up front because at least I could I could walk another year. Walking, exactly. you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you know, it was close to that point. Yeah. yeah no, I, but it was definitely 10, 10 or twenty times more uh, durable, everything, and more usable than than it is to these days. Eat less meat. Seriously, eat less meat. It's 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 good for your health, even if you don't believe that. It's good for your health. Yeah. It's good for the planet. Yeah. You know, two days a week, choose to have a vegetarian diet. Two days a week. Now start so, with one day. Start a week. with that. Yeah. You know? And by the way, see how you little feel about it. Little. Yeah. Little because we went Stand vegetarian, completely vegetarian for a while, and we felt great. Now we admit we eat meat every so often, but, but it's only every so often. Month. You know. It's maximum. Mm. Our, our diets, human diets, you know, outside of the last uh, few decades in the Western world, were not meat rich, but it comes at a cost. Yeah. And the cost is very, very taxing long term. Mm. What do you guys want? 
cool, cool planet or yeah, yeah, cheers. lots of stuff. Healthy planet or lots of stuff for a little uh, in the short <laughs> term. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. that's that's those are oh the choices God. we have. Yeah, it's like a, thank you, Eugene. Yeah. Very Jacuia. cool. Jacuia. <laughs> Jacuia. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you guys. There's Eugene and his buddy uh, apparently planting coral. We'll join him in a second. In the next episode, we want to share with you an unusual experience. Please join us underwater and see amazing work of marine biologists restoring Caribbean reefs. We are so lucky to observe them in their amazing work. Subscribe now and be notified about new release. Abre a consciência, deixa o Espírito a crescer.